you for the Word of God. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, that the blood of Christ has not lost its power. And we thank you that we've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And we are your children. We're sons and daughters of the Most High God through our faith in Christ. And we thank you now as the Word comes forth that our faith may rise to a higher level that we might be able to appropriate the promises of God through faith. And we give you honor and glory, Holy Spirit. Take over this service now. Touch our hearts with the word. Encourage us, strengthen us, direct us, and guide us. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We can go ahead and start now. I want you to get your Bibles, uh, if you will, and turn to the book of Galatians chapter 4. We're going to start with verse 4. More than a conqueror. Everybody say, more than a conqueror. More than a conqueror. Boy, that's powerful. Just to be a conqueror is pretty good. I'd almost settle for that, but God says we are more than conquerors. Sometimes we look at the things that we see, and it causes us to fear and tremble. But the Bible says, don't look at the things that you see, but look at the things you do not see. For the things that you do see are temporal, but the things you do not see are eternal. And so, thank God for that. Our, it'll be up on the board, uh, amplified. There it is right there, verse uh, starting with 4. But when the proper time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born subject to the regulations of the law. Verse 5, to purchase the freedom of the ransom to redeem, to atone for those who were subject to the law that we might be adopted and have sonship conferred upon us and be recognized as God's sons. Look at verse 6. And because you really are his sons, God has sent the Holy Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, Father. Therefore, you are no longer, verse 7, a slave bondservant, but a son, and if a son, then it follows that you are an heir by the aid of God through Christ. When you've been born again, you've been adopted into the family of God. And because you have been adopted into the family of God, you and I have many benefits. One of the benefits is that we can come to the throne of God to receive help and grace in time of need. Another benefit is God has given us eternal life. We will live throughout eternity. But thank God we will not live in these bodies that get tarred and weared down sometimes. How many in here feel sort of tarred this morning? Let me see your hands. Well, we knew that because it's manifesting through the atmosphere and we can pick it up and, I, and, and we can sense that I'm not scolding you. But you won't be tarred anymore like that. You won't have to have your wisdom teeth pulled. I had mine pulled. I don't think I know a little bit what you're going through. You won't have to have no more operation. You will have a new body, a body that will never die. You will have a glorified body. You will have a body like his body because you are now sons and daughters of the living God. When you trust Christ as your personal Savior, when you confess Christ as Lord of your life, when you confess with your mouth, when you acknowledge him before man, he says, I will acknowledge you before my heavenly Father in heaven. And he says to us, no, you're just not a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. Sometimes when I'm tired and I'm weary and, and the devil's been beating on me uh, 24-7, I always say this. It, my name is still written in the Lamb's book of life. I don't care what happens in this old world. Nothing can change that. Because God has sealed it by the blood of the Lamb. And I know that I've been redeemed because I've trusted in the Redeemer. Yes, I was once lost. I was once a sinner. You know, when we're on this side of the cross, just remember what I said. There's three things that will be saved. Your spirit, your body, and this earth. One day the curse will be lifted off of this earth. And you think it looks pretty? I got some sad news for you. There'll be no more gnats. But I'm going to give you one better than that. There'll be no more mosquitoes. Yeah. Woo! Lord, 
glory. Man, no more mosquitoes. The other day, I, I know you'd look over at our place, you'd think Susan was probably hitting me in the head, beating me up. No, she's just taking them mosquitoes off my head like that. How many has been fighting mosquitoes? If you haven't been fighting those mosquitoes, just come on outside here. Come on out here during the week and kill a couple thousand of them. Boy, we had them all over the place. But brother, when we have that glorified body, when the curse has lifted this off of this old world, you won't have no gnats, you won't have no mosquitoes, you won't have no snakes. You don't have to worry. Well, you'll have snakes, but you won't have to worry about them biting because if they do, it won't kill you because, let me tell you something, your new body will be eternal. And you think you look good now? Now, buddy, these are... Guys here, they are handsome. Where do you get your glorified body? Woo, glory. Give me five on that one. Come on. Come on. Yow, boy. Boy, you are going to look good. Susan said she can't wait to see me with my new hair, dude. Say, honey, you look good now, but boy, when you get that hair back. See, I used to have hair. It all waved goodbye. But she said, honey, you're still good looking. How many agree to that? Let me see your hands. Right. Get it? Right your name. <laughs> Listen, when you get my age, you don't worry about looks. You just want to be able to sleep good. You want to be able to eat good. You just want a woman that loves you like my wife loves me. But let me, when we're in our glorified body, listen, there'll be no more death. The curse will be removed from this earth. We'll be able to live and have the joy of the Lord. We'll be in the presence of God. We will see him face to face. When you read over and you begin to read the book of Genesis over there in the garden, God walked with man. Adam saw God face to face. They dealt with one another. Because of sin, death entered into the world. That's why we had to have a Savior. That's why Christ had to die on the cross. Because when we were born in the natural onto this earth, because of our forefather Adam, we inherited that sin. And therefore, we have to be born again. Except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And so Christ died on the cross to redeem every individual. Every individual needs to be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. So that's our first step. I remember when I was 26 years old. I was a good, I was a good guy at 26. I asked Susan, she married me when I was 20. Tell them how good I was. Don't, don't go that way. Anyway, <clears throat> but I mean, I drank, I cursed, I smoked, but I was fine. What was wrong with me? Well, I mean, what's a sick, a sick, a sick pack? What's a sick pack? Sick, S-I-C-K, sick, no, no. What's a few beers between friends? <laughs> I ain't hurting nobody. I'm a good old boy. But you know what? I had a wife that prayed, and she prayed to God, and God answered, and God saved me. And all I know is I was in a little Baptist church one day. I was sitting there about where, <coughs> empty chair right there, that's where I was sitting right there. And the preacher was up there giving an invitation. All I know is God showed me I needed to be saved. I can't explain it. A week before that, let me tell you, a week before I was saved, I went out with the boys and I got drunk. I did the boogie woogie. Yeah, you know where I learned the boogie woogie? Well, my dad used to spank me. Man, I, I mean, I, you know, when the boogie woogie came out, I said, what's new? I learned that way back in the 30s. Man, he'd come down with that strap, one leg would go up, down. Down, and you get the rhythm. <laughs> but see, in my mind, I was fine. I can't explain it. I was born again. The Spirit of God came and convicted me of sin, said, you're lost, Bob. You need to be saved. And I come, I didn't wait for the invitation. Man, I'm sitting right here, and he's talking about something. I don't remember. It was an announcement of some sort. I went up there. He looked at me. He said, what do you want? I want to get saved. He led me to Jesus Christ. Let me tell you the difference. I was lost. I was on this side. I was in the kingdom of darkness. 
I passed right through the cross, right through Jesus. And I was crucified with him, and I come up over here, and, and I was born again. I was a sinner, and now I'm a saint. Amen. And on the outside, I look just like I look right now, real pretty. <laughs> but I was different on the inside. And the same boys that I went out and got drunk with, now that I'm on this side of the cross, I begin to share Jesus with them. And one by one, they got saved. Amen. One by one, they all came into the kingdom of God. Now, I don't understand the whole Bible. All I know is I was once lost. I was separated from God. I didn't know God. And next thing you know, the Holy Spirit moves in my life, saves me, causes me to be born again. <clears throat> I come up and I confess with my mouth, the Lord Jesus Christ is my Savior. And I believed in my heart that God raised Him from the dead. And the Holy Spirit did a miracle inside of me and saved me from the inside out. I was wearing the same shirt, the same pants, had the same half a dollar in my pocket. Amen. But I was saved. I was once lost, but I'm saved. Explain it, I can't. It's a work of the Holy Spirit. But I tell you what, you know when you get it. You know when you have it. You know when God lives in you. It's no secret no more. You know you were once lost, but now you are saved. That witness, the Bible says, the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are sons of God. We are, if you're a woman, daughters of God. Saved by the power of God. And from that time on, and that was 54 years ago. Bob, did you know that God was going to call you to, called you, called, call you to preach? Man, listen. That's like saying, Bob, you're going to walk on the moon one day. I didn't like to get in front of people. I'm shy. Can't you tell? I am. T tell them, Susan. Susan. <laughs> Wisdom. <laughs> oh, yeah. How many shy people do we have in here? It has got to pick the shy people to speak. Now, Susan was born, at a, uh, born again in a tent meeting. She was the country girl. That's what I liked about Susan. She was a country girl. See, country girls just have that little something about them that you city girls don't have. And what it is, let me tell you what it is, it's country. <laughs> but you see, she didn't know, she's 14 years old, working out in the field. They're putting up a tent meeting. What's that? It was on Halloween night. I don't know, she might have thought there might have been the boogeyman over there or something. She says to her stepmother, what is that? That's a tent, they're going to have a revival. Revival? What's a Revival. So anyway, they go. They go, and they come in, and Susan's all eyeballs, sawdust, sawdust on the floor. No vacuum cleaner, no carpet in those days, just sawdust. And the seats were just boards, no back to them at all. You know, you sit down, if you wouldn't curl, your feet go up like that, <laughs> you go backwards. There she's sitting. The guy comes out with a guitar. And she listens. Then he come, the other guy comes out, has the Bible, and he's, he preaches on the, on the sowing of the word. And all of a sudden, that little 14-year-old girl saw a vision of Christ nailed to an old rugged cross, blood dripping down his face, his chest, briars, the crown of briars on his head, nails driven in his hands and his feet. And nobody had to give an invitation. Nobody said, you're lost, you're undone, you need to be born again. She ran to the altar, fell down at the altar and said, 
have mercy upon me, a sinner. Nobody told her she was a sinner. No human being told her. But the Holy Spirit convicted her in her heart. You need to be saved. Fourteen years old. She cried out to God. And let me tell you something. She was saved, baptized in the Holy Ghost, and started speaking in tongues. She got the whole package, rose up from there. And you know, before that, she said, you know what I did before that, Daddy? I said, well, if you want to tell me. I got a doll baby at Christmas one time, and I took the doll and tore the doll apart to see what was inside it and threw it away. But since I've been saved, I'm the same outside, but inside, I'm a new person. She had a desire for her whole family to be saved. She's 39 today. <laughs> a couple. Yeah, 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 amen, okay. But she has seen her whole family come to the Lord by the power of the convicting power of the Holy Spirit as we would pray one by one for them. And some of them we went and witnessed to and shared our testimony. You know, we shared about the time when uh, her sister's husband, he was an atheist, and he was struck down with a heart attack. And Susan is good to make these baskets. She'd make these baskets, put apples and candy and, and bananas and grapes and all the goodies in there, you know? And so we go to the hospital, and she presents that to him in the hospital. He's in the hospital with his heart attack. And in, in the uh, basket, uh, these little tracks that we have, the, 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 it was a red track. Back in those days, it was red. She put one of those in there. And he looked at that and looked at this. And said, what is this? He said, well, that's, you read that, and the plan of salvation uh, <clears throat> is in there. And, and you can, if you accept Christ, you can be saved. Saved? <clears throat> he just <clears throat> took the banana out. <clears throat> I only believe in what I can see. Okay. I said, excuse me, uh, I'll take that hushy bar. <clears throat> so anyway, we went out and I ate the hushy bar. But he, <clears throat> uh, so he goes out of the hospital. Three, three weeks later, he's back in the hospital again. Another heart attack. So we go there, and, we, and this time we talk about the Lord, how to get saved and everything. Had a little book in there. He listened to us. He said, it's a... It, it's just a tale, a fantasy tale. It, I'm an atheist. I don't believe in God, you know. And uh, took the little booklet and threw it in the trash. Took his banana out. I eat banana. I said, you got any chocolate candy in there? Thank you. <laughs> got my chocolate. And we went out rejoicing because we knew the Holy Spirit was on his can you use that word in church? Yes. <laughs> Let me think of another word. Why? I didn't hear you. It was on his high knee. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> on his high knee. Oh, that's what she said. Okay. That's true. That's why they call him the hound of heaven. When he gets your scent, when he sees somebody praying for you, he will hound you down. You can come the hard way or you can come the easy way. And I tell you, my child, I'd come the easy way. That's right. Because he ain't going to turn you loose because he hears the prayers of the saints. I can give testimony after testimony of people being saved when the Holy Spirit is on their honey, honey. When you, when you touch, when you understand, when you realize how the Holy Spirit works, 
powerful. He, he has never lost a case. It may look bad at times, but I'm here to tell you he's never lost a case. And some of you, I sense, I tell you, I sense the Holy Spirit is on some of y'all's. What's the word again? Huh? <laughs> they like the honey. Honey. And I, you know, and you're going to be miserable. Oh, my dad was miserable. Until he got saved. And, 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 but God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that if you would believe in him, you would not perish but have everlasting life. God is in the saving business. It is not God's will that any person should be lost and go to a burning hell. That is not God's design. That's why he's in Christ. That's why Christ died on the cross once and for all for the sins of the world. Born again. And I'll tell you, if you're here this morning, and if you've been born again, you know it. But if you're here and you don't know it, that's because you're not saved. And I'm not saying that to be mean to you, but to alert you that you need to be saved. You need to put your faith and trust in the Lord and let God take you out of the kingdom of darkness. And that old man will be crucified on the cross with Christ. And he'll put you over here in the kingdom of the Son of God. And now you will be a child of God, an heir of God. I love this scripture. An heir of God and a co-heir with Jesus Christ. What does that mean to you? An heir of God and a co-heir with Jesus Christ. That means that everything that God has will belong to his children. Ain't nobody shouting in here. Amen. I heard one amen up here. Well, let me bring it down to where you can uh, get really identify with it. See, if you don't identify with this message, watch Susan over there. If you don't identify with this message, let's see, that ought to, that's a $100 bill. That ought to jar somebody. Some of you are smiling. See, some of you are identifying. Now, we're talking about air, millionaire. How many wants to be a millionaire? If you're a child of God, you are a millionaire. You're a billionaire. You're a trillionaire. You're an heir of God. Everything that God owns belongs to you because you are his child. See, there's benefits in being a child of God. I even got these young people's attention. Smell the perfume on that $100 bill. But I can, I can see that none of you really are not paying too much attention about being, I mean, you don't really want to be an heir of God. You don't want a big trillion dollars, so I'll put that away. And Susan, Susan over there. No more Sear and Roebuck payments. No more house payments. No more, listen, no more car payments. No more getting on the airplane and flying to Atlanta and waiting there to get on an aircraft for, uh, and, and fly somewhere else in the world. No, you will be in a glorified body. And if you think, well, I think I want to go to Hawaii, boom, you're there. Some of you don't believe that. Listen, this ain't no, this is a tremendous gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. You are an heir of God, a co-heir. You can come right into the throne of God in fellowship with God Almighty. A little while ago I said Adam was fellowshipping with Eve because, not, not with, well, probably so too, but anyway, I missed that one. I hope they were fellowshipping. They were, you know, okay. And then started fellowshipping with God. They, you know. 
But when Adam and Eve sinned, sin separated them from God. Quit laughing, Rosemary. <laughs> and, and, and therefore, his spirit died. Man's spirit is dead. That's why you've got to be born again. That's the good news. In the day when I received Christ, my spirit man became alive. It was quickened by the Holy Spirit. And I became a child of God because I put my faith and trust in what Christ did on the cross. And now I become an heir of God and a co-heir with Jesus Christ. And everything that God has, everything that Christ has belongs. We will rule and reign with him throughout eternity of eternities. When Christ comes and lands on the earth, this earth will be redeemed. The curse will be gone. There'll be no more wars, no more suffering, no more crying and weeping or hunger or anything like that. And we will be in our resurrected bodies, and God will put each and every one of us that has served him in certain places of responsibility. Susan's going to be the uh, mayor of Hanahan. See, there'll be no more mosquitoes. She won't really have a hard job, really, just being mayor of Hanahan. Some of you probably be the pres president of the United States. Who wants that job? All right, you'll be the president of the United States then. But we'll have places of responsibility, make sure that everything in his kingdom is doing just fine. So listen, it's not just for this life. Can I say something? I know these young people probably look at me and they think I'm ancient. You think that? <laughs> I'm not ancient. I really, no, I'm not ancient. But when I was their age, I looked at somebody 50 years old, and they were old. How many remember that? They were old. I remember that. How old is he? Oh, he's old. How old is he? Well, he's 50 years old. Every bit of 50, boy, he is old. Then when you get up, I'm almost 80. You know, some of you probably think I'm really ancient. I'm not ancient. I'm just wore out. I tell you the truth. I mean, let's move on now. When you get old, you just get wore out. But see, that's the blessings of God. God ain't going to leave us in these old bodies that are wore out. When you get about 80 and 85, some of you wore out at 40. Come on, talk to me now in this place. Huh? You won't have to worry about that. Hallelujah. <coughs> You'll have a glorified body. Wonderful. One day I'm going to die. No, you're not. See, one of the benefits of being a child of God, you will never die. He that believeth in me shall never die. He believeth in me, though he be dead, yet shall he live. No, oh, these old bodies will quit breathing. How many wants to take your body to heaven? Let me see. <laughs> he thought that over real quick. Now, when you get older, you'll, you'll sit on your hands. How many in here want to take your body to now, here's a young, strong man. He's strong, handsome, good-looking. You want to take your body to heaven with you? Well, <laughs> I want to say something to you. When you get your glorified body, you'll be able to eat. You know that, that ice cream you can't quit eating? You won't have to stop eating. You just keep on eating. You can eat and eat and eat and not get fat. Who said bring it on? How many likes to eat in here? Come on. Yeah. Most of us are digging our graves with our teeth, aren't we? Huh? Come on. I'll... <laughs> I, I'm talking about myself, too. I'm seriously, I have to fight it. Susan comes up, you want another piece of pie? And that little voice inside, and it's between. 
Uh, hey, how about this? Just, just, just a, uh, a small piece. <laughs> so she cuts it, she gives me the extra piece of pie, and I eat that, and that was really, really good. Do you have any ice cream, darling? Uh, just a little bit more piece of pie, with a little ice cream on the next one. You know, they were, they were cooking uh, barbecue chicken over here uh, and uh, ribs. And I went over and I, and I spent $30. But you see, it was just to help the church. I just wanted to help God's work over there. So I took the chicken and the barbecue, went home, and that's what we'll have today when we go home. But see, we got to stretch our minds. We got to see what the future is going to be for us. Yes, there's times it's rough down here. I'll say it rougher than that. It's horrible sometimes down here if you live long enough. Now, you young people cannot, I mean, you never, how many's ever been hungry in here? I mean, really hungry. <coughs> you must have been born in the 30s when there was depression. That's when I was born. Hey, listen, when I was a boy and you had chicken, I don't care what, you, you didn't give the dogs the bones. You ate the bones too. I'm serious. You chewed them up. You take a piece of chicken and you just keep chewing on that thing and keep chewing. And I think that's what happened to my hair. But anyway, but you keep <laughs> chewing on that. Seriously, you didn't waste nothing. I mean, pork and beans was my favorite bean. I love pork and beans. I'm talking about way back there they had pork and beans. There wasn't much pork in it, but there was a lot of beans, okay? You know why I like pork and beans? Huh? You don't want to know why? What are you laughing for? I like pork and beans because they fill you up. Yep. You know? Go to, I like the, when I go to bed at night, how many likes to, that comfortable feeling right there? Huh? That's why you eat at midnight, right? Pizzas. How many eats pizza, you know? And the next morning, you, you know, you feel pizza. Look at the pizza boys here. They're pizza. That's the second, that's the second name. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce you to you, Mr. Mr. Pizza. I like pizza, but not when I go to bed, because it don't seem to want to, you know, circulate. It stays right there, right there. But listen, we can eat. No more sickness. <coughs> no more toothaches. How many of you ever had a toothache? No more toothaches. Hey, I like this one. No more arguing and fighting. No more wars. No have to worry about going to the hospital. No more doctors. A glorified body. And it'll be just like the body that Jesus Christ got when he was resurrected. And he ate in his resurrected body, tells us that we will be able to eat in our resurrected bodies. No lawyers, no doctors, no wars, no arguments. Total peace, presence of God everywhere. So there are benefits, many benefits, not just escaping hell and gaining heaven. That's benefit enough but to be able to fellowship with God right now I thank God that my relationship with God has developed where I can have relationship with him every day every day I have fellowship with God every day I have fellowship with my wife every day you know I told you the other day that I could when she goes off shopping I could not wait for her to come back home Remember I told you that? I said, I cannot wait for my wife to come back home. I miss her so much, and I'm ready to eat. <laughs> <coughs> come on, let's tell it like it is, boys. But seriously, I really, but we fellowship. You know, we play checkers in the afternoon sometimes. You know, some of you uh, husbands, wives don't know what to do. Just get you a checkerboard. Start playing checkers. I love to watch Susan when we're playing checkers and her expressions on her face. I love it. And I'm over there. I'm looking at her. Exp I love to see her expressions. 
Nein, du bist nicht. Sorry. No. Every move is a crisis. <laughs> And it just move. <laughs> Sometimes I just forfeit the game and let her win, you know, to make her feel good, you know. And you ought to see her face when she wins, you know. In fact, yesterday afternoon we was playing checkers and I fixed it up where she could jump. Boom, boom. She jumped me three. She jumped three of my kings. And I, looked, I said, honey, you won the game. And she went, I won the game. I, yeah, you won the game, baby. Give me a kiss. Mm. Yes, and when you're 80 years old, you can still have fun with your mate. Glory to God is wonderful. But that's nothing compared to the glory. The glory that's going to be set before us. I mean, it's glory. It's glory. You wake up in the morning and it's glory. In the daytime, it's glory. At nighttime, it's glory. All through the day, it's glory upon glory upon glory for eternity. Brother, that's a good deal. I want in on that. How do you get in on that? If thou will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shall be saved. And that is the invitation for those that are on this side of the cross that God Almighty through his Son has reconciled the world back to himself. If they will come and come God's way Because you've got to be saved before you can enter into the kingdom of God. And that's why Jesus said a man must be born again before he can see the kingdom of God. I just mentioned a few benefits. There are benefits upon benefits of being a child of God. Let's pray. Father, we pray that anybody in here today that has never experienced a new birth, they've never committed their life to Christ and received him as their Lord and Savior, may this be the day that they do that. Salvation is waiting for them. They can become a child of God through their faith in Christ. And the Bible says they'll be saved. Father, what a wonderful plan you have prepared for humanity. And we thank you that through Christ we are reconciled back to the Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may stand to your feet, turn to somebody and say, I